Hey, what's up, VC? Joey Kim here. I hope everybody's doing well. Today, I'm jumping into Rob Walker's 2024 vinyl tag. Thank you, Rob, for taking the time um, to come up with these uh, 20 questions. Um, pretty sure this was time consuming. Thank you. I do enjoy tags, um, vinyl tags. Uh, makes me think out of, the, out of the box and it helps me rediscover some records, which is pretty cool. So for the ones that are not familiar with my channel, I've been in, a, I joined the VC 10 months ago. Uh, my, I, I mostly show punk rock, uh, which is um, my preferred genre. Is a genre that I, you know, have records, even though I like much more than that. You know, a lot of, you know, I like a lot of genres, um, but punk rock is, you know, my wheelhouse. So this tag, as you can imagine, was pretty difficult for me. Um, you're gonna see a lot of punk rock in here, but community is about cooperation. So I decided that, you know, I needed to, um, to help out, right? Anyways, so favorite purchase of 2023. Uh, 2023 was not a good year for me when it, come, when it came to find grails. I didn't find anything. My want list has been stagnant for almost 20, uh, two years. Uh, nothing pops on when it does is now within a price range that I'm willing to well either that I can afford or willing to pull the trigger but uh I did buy a box set I don't buy I have some seven inches box sets but I don't I traditionally don't buy box sets but I did and I'm glad I did I uh, ordered the Red Cadet um, first box set two box sets came out this is a uh, 1980-1989 so it covers first half of their career more, more or less. Um, it's great. Five, five records sounds great. A booklet with great pictures. This is classic Finnish punk rock, punk hardcore. Uh, you still can find that out there. You know, we did eighty dollar range, which is pretty awesome. So I was pretty happy with this. Last record you bought in twenty twenty three was class. Uh, if you've got nothing, this came out on Fillet Records. Uh, some will describe this as an indie rock band with a punk edge. I will describe this as like alternative rock with some punk, power pop, and also mod influences. Cool band from Arizona. Uh, show two records released on the same year by the same artist. I'm gonna go Captain Obvious here with the Ramones, Live On, Rocket Russia, both 1977. Both two classic, fantastic records. This was, in my opinion, the best stage of uh, their career. If you had to choose a decade, this question was not very clear to me as I was starting to watch too many tags, vinyl uh, tags, you know, and I didn't want to go back and watch Rob's again and write down the uh the questions again so it was not clear if it was like if you were if you had to choose a decade of record to listen exclusively to to the music that came out during that decade or if it was a decade that you could that you would like to live through so in, if that was the case for me it would be the 80s and the reason being is because i would be able to experience early stages of california punk or California hardcore, Circle Jerks, Adolescence to influential classic records, uh, which I encourage any of you that are not into punk rock to give it a try. Also, the 80s, uh, in, during the 80s in England, punk rock, uh, the punk rock was not dead. It was actually probably the most prolific era, it was the 80s. UK82, which is like a subgenre that stands for uh, punk made in, in England, uh, from like 1981-86. Blitz is one of the most well-known bands from that subgenre. And also I will be able to enjoy the wonders of one of my favorite bands, The Sound, and Jews and Mary Shane in their A game. Plus I'll be able to listen to all their issues from the stuff that I like from the 60s, 50s, and 70s. So there we go. Um, Show Manchester band. I want a little bit more obscure here, uh, and I, this is a band from the Great Manchester Manchester era. Uh, 
punk rock, more into the pub rock, you know, side of things. Excellent on the East Links. Uh, it's a great band. If you like um, Eddie and Hot Rods, they're not as catchy as Eddie and Ro Hot Rods, but they have that rock and roll, pub rockish drive. Strongly encourage you to check them out. Great band. Uh, the most listed, listened artist from 2023. So I do listen to a lot of music every day. I do social work. I spend a lot of time in the community driving. So my playlists are always on shuffle. And on top of that, I do listen to a lot of music at home with my wife. And uh, taking the wife in consideration, I'll say that the most listened artists in 2023 must have been one of these because those are three uh, bands that we can't agree upon, which is the Volant Femmes, Robert Gordon, and the Stumps. But my guess would be the Volant Femmes. Um, show seven seven inches. Okay, I'm not gonna ramble too much uh, on this because I really want this video to be as quick as possible. The Brazy Wheels, classic um, 80s um, British punk band, fantastic. Disrupt, one of the most well-known bands within the grindcore universe, classic. Cockney Rejects, East End Heroes, uh, Godfathers of Oi, uh, their ly lyrics help coin the Oi. Uh, term which stands for street punk with a lot of football slash soccer influences Disco Zombies 1979 I believe Leicester um, punk band however was a punk band caught in the transition to from punk to new wave post punk uh, there's there stay more on the punky side of things um, listen to the song Time will tell. It's a great band. Love Disco Zombies. Uh, Peggio Punks from Italy. Classic uh, 80s Italian hardcore. Splodge Nessa Bounds. Um, Godfathers of a subgenre uh, known as Pathetic Punk. They do use humor instead of uh, vicious lyrics to uh, tell the kids what. Tell the kids what's wrong with the world. Great band. And my favorite favorite hard rock band of all time. Rose Tattoo. Rock and Roll is Kink. Yeah. All time. Um, open, I'm open for a debate. Bring the Led Zeppelins and the ACDCs for a debate. This is the best. I do love both of those two. Joking. Um, four people you will invite uh, to a dinner party. Well... I went with four interesting individuals. Uh, seems like they all like to party, which is the purpose of a party. Uh, plus, I do work on a mental health field, so it would be kind of neat to psychoanalyze them, <laughs> you know. Uh, so anyway, anyways, and hopefully, we will end up the party without getting our mug shot. Jim Morrison. Gigi Allen. The wonderful Wendy O. Williams from the Plasmatics. And I'm sorry, guys. And the kink, Elvis Presley. I really would like to meet him. Um, <coughs> an artist that we lost in 2023. It was easy for me. We lost many, but the one I will... I'm gonna miss the most for sure. Uh, Shane McGowan, love me the Pokes. Saw him, saw him multiple times. Yeah, what a loss, Shane McGowan. What a loss. And uh, let me ramble a little bit. I wanted to share something with you guys. During the, all these New Year specials that were broadcasted here um, in the U.S., you know, where the year is, you know, they revisit media revisits the year and. You know, mentions people that passed away and the ones that, you know, did great accomplishments. I didn't see one reference to Shane McGowan. You know, uh, shame on you. Um, shame on you. Uh, we were bombarded, you know, constantly re reminded how 
Taylor Swift. I have nothing against Taylor Swift, but Taylor Swift was elected the personality of the year. Wow, what a world we live in. Anyways, three channels you discovered in 2023. Uh, I'm going to mention three channels, but I have to mention these guys first. The reason why I joined the VEC without Vinyl Richie, without Dr. October, without Ryan Kidd, without Uncommon Parlor, without Grand Zero Salem, I wouldn't be here. So I need to highlight these guys because I was list I was watching these guys prior to creating my own channel. But three channels, and I apologize to all of the others that I'm gonna have to leave outside of this list, but three channels that I watch frequently, that uh, I enjoy is George Blockhead. I really appreciate um, George's youth and passion and good taste. And if you're a Devo and Elvis Costello fan, pretty sure you stumble on George's channel by now. Uh, Pops and Clicks uh, from Sweden. I really enjoy his channel. I really enjoy, you know, how he presents, how he he, he discusses what he, you know, his content. Um, seems like a super cool, laid back um, individual with a very eclectic music taste. Love his channel. And last but not least, Clifford the Vinyl Cheap Steak. I'm gonna give it to Clifford. Uh, Clifter, Clifford's cool guy, a lot of punk, a lot of metal, uh, yeah, a lot of things that I, I like, so, yeah, those three guys. Um, and also, I'm gonna, another mention here, I want to mention Bomber. Bomber, he doesn't put out videos, but he, does, he puts out some shorts here and there, and I really appreciate Bomber, because he does provide me feedback, he, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, my brother from another mother, we really have a very similar music taste. Um, if you can listen to music from one country, well, uh, you know, after thinking on, on this question, it's like, yeah, I'm gonna have to go with uh, Portugal, you know, I could not, it's my native language, so I could not, you know, discard my uh, native language, so it will be Portugal will be Portuguese music, yeah. A record you bought as a teenager, and it takes me back to Portugal. This Pesticida, the Veneno. This is like a classic uh, 80s Portuguese punk band. They became, uh, I don't know, some will say now they're a rock band. They evolved, they became to a bigger band. Classic Portuguese uh, 80s uh, alternative music. Of a funk or a soul record, uh, yeah, this one came out to my mind as soon as someone mentioned this record. Um, it's not a Sam Cooke record, but it's a tribute to Sam Cooke, Sam Cooke by the Blues Busters. Uh, Blues Busters, you know, um, raggish, skyish duo, duo. They do an amazing, amazing, amazing uh, work to, um, an amazing tribute to Sam Cooke's work. This is what every tri tribute a record should sound like, and it's fantastic. So, some soul from you, from Sam Cooke, on the, the Blues Busters, in this case. Um, uh, okay, okay. So, one record everyone has, and nobody, uh, uh, and nobody has on the VC. So, one that everybody has, or if you don't, you should, is Clash is London Calling. One that everybody doesn't have of myself is this band, Sin Nombre. Friend of mine, he lived in, uh, from Portugal, lived in New Jersey uh, for like a, 10 years or so. So he tag along from some Latinos. What do you have here is some political raging hardcore uh, played by Latinos with a Portuguese dude screaming his guts out. <laughs> Uh, a female fronted band, which I just realized I forgot to pick up a record for this question, but that's easy. Well, that's pretty easy. 
I wish I was easy to find it. Anyways, apologies, but I'm gonna go with X-ray specs, the wonderful polystyrene. Um, if you, a 90s classic album, this is for the punks out there. Uh, the 90s was also a very prolific year for punk rock. Uh, you know, there was a lot of, um, a lot of um, old bands reunion reunion uh, making doing reunions coming out of good work and a lot of new bands uh punk has a lot of subgenres and um as a result of that um becomes very divisive which is pretty um you know pretty sad you know because it's you know a subculture that traditionally you know appeals to unity and you know to fight together against what has been imposed on us and all that and it turns into these um little cool kids clubs here and there it's just pitiful but anyways i'm too old for that thank god uh but a record that during the 90s kind of uh unified scenes like people that listen to more archer stuff to and people that listen to more poppy stuff and he's, this became a classic within punks was um swinging others from san francisco streets of san francisco debut it's poppish uh yeah but for a short period of time the, the, the this record kind of pleased everybody it didn't last though <laughs> and um if you could walk into a cover of a record um so you know, tough question too, uh, but I, so I can share share a little bit of myself with you guys. So I do like, um, you know, I'm a big Mad Max fan. I like sci-fi. I like some, you know, any apocalyptic tale. And I'm one of those guys also that likes some, you know, I'm one of those guys that still watches Conan the Barbarian at least three times a year. So I think this cover, this is Sacrilege Classic, um, uh metallic punk band female fronted uh from england this is a reissue that came out on relapse records a couple of years back this is not the original cover but this uh this is alternative cover but it looks pretty sick yeah so yeah that will do for my personal taste so a record that is not a great estate, but it could be. I'm gonna go with this classic Steve Little Fingers inflammable, inflammable material, classic Belfast eras. Yeah, this is a great estate. You need this in your life, punk or no punk. A record from 1974. A record that tends to be forgotten. Of course, is this record has been it is overshadowed by uh, its predecessor, their debut. But nevertheless, it's a great record. New York Dolls, Too Much Too Soon, their second LP. Awesome stuff. Anyways, apologies uh, for the slop, you know, for being a little bit sloppy here, but I really wanted to get this done and done a ASAP. Uh, happy 2024 to everyone. And thank you again, Rob Walker, for taking time to do this. Cheers.